coming live from an Airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show today. We're headed to Libin Kitchen Farm in Derry and Dupuy, Oklahoma. And a little bit later, we've got some listener call-outs. And uh, I think some of them will help renew your hope in humanity. I'm Brett. And I am Harley. You know, our show, I think one of the cornerstones of, corner, cornerstones. Cornerstones of our show, leave that in because I've noticed we're just starting to leave stuff in these days. One of the cornerstones to our show is not only breakfast, but we do talk about farm-to-table stuff a lot. Lo- buy local, stay local. Well, I think it's one of the pillars of oh, our show. Too. Well, yeah. I mean, we are... The, that's what we're all about. We we also talk a lot about road trips. Yeah, we do. We talk a lot about uh, Route 66. Yep. And um, I'm going to have to say that the Living Kitchen Farm and Dairy in Depew kind of checks a lot of boxes here. It does, and it's extremely difficult to say if you don't think about what you're about to say. If I'm not reading it, I could not say the words Living Kitchen. What you don't know is Living during the kitchen, intro, farm I was and reading it. At a regular size, so I'm proud of myself, I didn't have it up to like a 16 point. It's a lot to say, but more to the point, there's a lot There's a lot going on in four, on 400 acres in, in Depew, Oklahoma. Absolutely. So, like I said, it's on Route 66. It's in Depew. It's really close to Bristow. Mm-hmm. We've been we, there. We've been there. We did yeah. a show on the beach house. Yeah. And um, I'm willing to bet that there's some cross-pollination of some local fruits and vegetables in that relationship. Oh, absolutely, because when we talk to the owner of the Beach House, all of their all of their farm-to-table items come directly from the farmer's market. I mean, right. and people come from all around to this market, so I'm willing to bet they do a lot of horse trading over there. I would, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, now, as far as the Living Kitchen Farm and Dairy, mm-hmm. this is... I'm going to say this one is a little different. I mean, yeah, just overall. Okay. Not, not, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm right, just right, saying right, right, dramatically right. different from dining experiences as you know it. Right. You you definitely want to saddle up for <laughs> for the description <laughs> and the way that they, they operate. Uh, absolutely. So the restaurant, mm-hmm. so to speak, it's not, but it's a farm-to-table organization. Right. But it is the eating area mm-hmm. is on the porch right. of a rustic two-story cabin that's decorated with antiques and saddles and farm equipment, things like that. Well, I'm learning some new thing. I didn't know there was a such thing as a Nubian milk goat. They have Nubian milk goats. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't. I thought goats just ate grass. I, did, I, I don't know enough about goats to even go into a Nubian milk goat, but they've got it. They've got it. They do have a lot of goats, apparently, yeah. as pets on yeah. the farm. As far as the porch goes, though, it mm-hmm. sits on the edge of just basically a forest of trees. Right. And with all the lighting and the ambiance, it's kind of something different. And that's really just kind of where the beginning of different starts with the living kitchen. There are a couple of places that we've talked about in Oklahoma that are their 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 modus operandi the the way they operate is is kind of a community communal situation it's similar here you actually it's a you sit down with maybe 36 of your closest friends or 36 of complete strangers it's literally the it is one table yeah that seats 36 people so that's again a way out of the norm we're used to as a society as oklahomans we're used to The most uh, intimacy that we see during a normal Mm -hmm. meal at a restaurant is that when we had to sit at the table instead of the booth. Oh, right. And there are people too close to you. Or when you sit in that booth back to back with someone that constantly moves and you're like shaking around and stuff like that. But what I what I think is interesting about this story is so much like other stories that we talk about how they got started was a basic premise Lisa Becklin and Linda Ford, they created the Living Kitchen. The sole purpose was to pay for goat feed. It, it was. The first time that they did a meal, which was yeah. in 2006, it was literally to pay for goat feed. I think that is a really cool origin story, and I love the fact that they have goats running around there now. Yeah, and the other thing that they do, I think, that's uh, that's very Oklahoma, is they're, they're, they have themed dinners. They do. 
Um, and those themes range, they're all over the place. But yeah. just as an example, one of the themes at one point in time was the Red Dirt Dinner. Mm -hmm. So again, we're, we'll get into what we know about the menu yeah. in just a bit. But they literally spent years perfecting food options to really incorporate incorporate the flavors that Oklahomans love and that we we grew up on. Yeah, and the other, you know, you take that as let me to piggyback on that. They take basically the again, it's the the Oklahoma favorites, the the, the fan favorites that we grew up with, with almost a kind of a a fine, not a fine dining, but kind of a cuisine, a cuisine type twist to them. I would say fine dining, yeah, to be completely okay. honest. Yeah. I mean, it, it may not be what you expect from fine dining. You know, the the crystal glasses and yeah, 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 yeah. It, it may not be that, but I think the experience overall, I think, is going to blow a lot of those type of experiences out of the water. But buyer beware, they have a seasonal menu, so you got to be kind of aware of what they have when they have it. Or you're going to, you're going to strike when the iron's hot. Or you may not get the chicken fry. <laughs> it is basically like a multi-course meal. Uh -huh. How many courses, though? Well, I think it probably depends yeah. on the, the event. But I've, yeah. I've seen numbers at nine-course di dinner. So, again... Golly, a nine-course dinner? Yes, but some of the courses are are you know specific specifically for palate cleansing and that type right, of thing. Right? Yeah. So a, a maize is it or like a small taste? Well, I think they call that a maize bouche, where it's just a just a taste of this or that. Right. Yeah. But more importantly, I think the overall dining experience mm -hmm. is really remarkable, and I I, I think it's something that's going to stick with you for a long time. So before you start dinner, yeah. Are we there yet? I feel well, like we're there yet. Well, yeah. I mean, kind of walk us, let me walk it through. So before you start dinner, yeah. you you get there about a half an hour early and you mm -hmm. can kind of walk around the the farm and check things out and introduce yourself to the other people that are going to be joining you. Mm -hmm. And then the the menu varies by season. Mm -hmm. So you're really, you almost never know what you're going to get. If you make a reservation, they haven't decided the menu yet. Right. By the time you have a reservation, I mean, by the time they decide the menu, the reservations are taken. So right. you're you're shooting in the dark. Uh -huh. But I think that's part of the magic. Well, and I think when you have that many courses, I would almost assume that there are a lot of things that are, wouldn't you think that they're kind of a family style situation? Because I was looking, you can get vegan or vegetarian options. They'll make it available to right. you. Um, with, a, with enough. Probably notice, I would yeah, say. Yeah, with enough notice and if the meal allows for it. Like, yeah. there may be situations where it's not possible, and they'll tell you that in advance. But just to give you an idea of the tastes mm -hmm. around the living kitchen, yeah, they do things like chicken fried steak and barbecue, but then they also do things like cornbread and buttermilk. God, that sounds so good. Like, literally, and it's something that I don't think a lot of people have any real experience with, mm. but warm corn warm cornbread in a bowl of cold huh. buttermilk. I bet that in the I bet the cornbread soaks up the buttermilk. To me it kind of sounds like an oaky tres leches. It does. That's yeah. that's exactly what I was thinking yeah, when yeah, I read yeah, yeah, when yeah. I read about it. So but uh, some other items that they've done in the past, they mm -hmm. something called beans and taters, which sounds very Oklahoman. Mm -hmm, it does. Until you read the description, it's fresh green beans, purple potatoes, and bits of pork over a pool of house-made cultured butter. Oh, mama. Oh, my God. <laughs> or how about oat cheese stuffed small poblano pepper with tomatilla salsa and smoked tomato sauce served over corn cake? And I opted for three plain, they were delicious, pork chops tonight, by the way. Great job on those. But now I'm feeling another course. I'm, I'm, I'm eight courses shy. Well, speaking of pork, they have they've had in the past pulled pork, mashed Corolla potatoes, gravy, grilled okra, biscuits, and house made butter. Oh my god! I like fried. I mean, fried okra. I've never. I, that's a a thing. It's Oklahoma. You can get fried okra. I've never heard of grilled okra. Now I got it. One of the things that I I'm gonna have problems with when we go here. Not eating the smoked peach collard. <laughs> No, 
One of the things that I'm going to have problems with. If one. You, one of the things that I'm going to have problems with when we go there. Yeah. Is I'm the guy that gets full on chips and salsa. Yeah. It, if you serve me eight different things. You're going to be toast. By the time I get to the end. I'm going to miss out on the smoked peach cobbler topped with Earl Grey goat milk ice cream. How is that a thing? And furthermore, how do you but how do you push away and say, no, I'm good. I'm waiting for dessert. You've got this parade of just delicious palate cleansing, colon cleansing, <laughs> passing through just to get to the, I don't, man. I, I think that's the day you, you, you become a competitive eater. You got to go all the way. I, I feel like you do, but again, I th- I'm going to have to work really hard not to just be dying by the end of the night. Oh, absolutely. Diners can bring their own wine or beer. B-Y-O-B, B-O-I-O-W, huh? The kitchen does provide non-alcoholic beverages, uh-huh. but they don't have a liquor license or anything like that, right. so it's bring your own. But they have partnered with a winery. They have. So Ranch Acres Wine and Spirits in Tulsa... They actually do some wine pairings mm-hmm. for the kitchen. Mary Stewart, the owner of Ranch Acres, was a frequent guest there, yeah. and they decided to kind of team up. And so you can reach out to the team over at Ranch Acres, yep. and they will arrange for you to get exactly what you need to go with your dinner, which yes. I think is brilliant. So we're going to include a link in the show notes if yeah. you're interested in having Ranch Acres arrange your beverage situation for now, dinner. Now, hang on a sec. Yes. Between you and I, I'm not a wine guy, but I would I would love to see somebody tell me what wine I got to eat with my chicken fry. That's a sweet that's a sweet tea for me. Am I, I wrong? I think all of my wine happens to be unsweetened tea. Yeah. So I I think that's definitely something that we could benefit from. Straw I think a strawberry wine, just a just a basement brew. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that plum plum wine, sand plum. So it's back to Living Kitchen, though. Yeah. They have special events throughout the year, and uh, they've always got those events listed on their website. Mm-hmm. So if you're interested in any of those special days that come along, Valentine's Day, that sort of thing, uh, keep an eye on their website so you can get in before the getting is gone. Okay. So we've talked about all of the things, uh, every what you get when you go to get it. we got to get to the hard part. Okay, so, yes, there are some, you really have to want to make this happen. Yeah. Because it is super limited, it's super exclusive, you have to be an elite food fanboy. Yes, this is a foodie fan club experience. Right, so they're only open, they only do this Uh April through December. It only happens on the weekend nights. During Mm -hmm. that time as well. Yeah. So not only are you limited in the months that you can do it, but you're limited in the number of days that you can do it. Yeah. And their reservations are booked months in advance. Mm Mm-hmm. So, again, this is something you're going to have to work for. If you're an elite foodie, then you're going to have to jump through some hoops to make this one happen. So, but let's talk price. I think... And now when you think about, before I get into the price, I think people are going to go, what? I think for the window of time to do it, what you get, the present, I think you're paying for, you're paying for everything. It's an experience. It's an experience. April through November, $115. Right. And then the month of December, all dinners are $145 per person. Yeah. Now, what does that include? That includes your meal, every course of the dinner. Uh, non-alcoholic beverages and your gratuity right. are all included in that. But you got to be gathering time again. Starts about thirty minutes before dinner, so I, you can look at it and go, "Well, this isn't burger." Again, it's it, you're paying for an experience. I got no issue with that. I would definitely plan it around. It'd be a great thing to plan around an anniversary or some a special occasion. Yes, the no kids because I'm not seeing anywhere where it says kids under. Three or free? No. So as far as the kids go, th- their thought on it is they're welcome. Yeah. But young children are not going to enjoy this. No. Like, this is not something that they're going to find 
enjoyable. Yeah. There aren't any chicken strips. Or dino bites or mac and cheese. Right. So if you have an older child and this is something you want to do, you know, for a special occasion for them or something like that, I'm sure that's fine. But as far as the toddlers, I wouldn't even try. If your kids eat mac and cheese out of a box and think it's better than the kind that you bake in the oven, don't bring them. Well, there, <laughs> there are other issues, not just the food. Yeah. So this is an outside event. Mm-hmm. And except for heaters in the wintertime, there's not a lot going. So it's open air. It's an open air. Yeah. There, there are fans and things. Yeah. But it's open air, so your two-year-old in mm-hmm. June is not going to have fun sitting there while you go through this three-hour-long experience. So here's, we got to have this, the, the, let's talk, can we talk about the white elephant on the menu? Are we talking, <laughs> um, COVID precautions. Which also impacts your abil- your ability and availability because they're still according to what I'm reading they're still working at half capacity right now right with until covid is not a concern at all they're right. going to continue to operate at half capacity to make sure that everybody's got ample room for social distancing they require masks if you're walking around the cabin their staff are masks they have sanitation products around for everybody to use and basically they want you to kind of stay in your lane. If you came with a group, you stay with that group, mm-hmm. and that way there's no real cross contamination. I mean, if you got it, flaunt it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think that's a terrible. I think there's a lot to ask here. I think the requests are reasonable. I think for the experience, for getting something that's literally, they literally milked that. They can point at the goat that made the milk that made the cornbread or whatever <laughs> he's right there he probably has a name his name's I, gary i'm pretty sure that gary the male goat did not provide the milk for anything why what that's new he they they mentioned nubia milk what's where are they gonna get the new what are they gonna use nubia milk for okay I don't we don't the, know i don't want to be the one to bust your bubble on this yeah but Male goats oh, they don't. don't produce milk. <laughs> I yeah, I got nipples. Can you milk me, Greg? Remember that from <laughs> Well, okay, Gary, you're safe. <laughs> so if you want to get a feel for the team at Living Kitchen, yeah, before you, you go out on the limb. Right. Do you take you, you want to do a little recon first. A little little br- a little brunch background checking. You can you can go out to the Cherry Street Farmer's Market, yeah. and they're there most Saturday mornings. And I'm sure they're going to have something to, for you to smell and maybe even something for you to taste. So, Absolutely. What else can we say? Well, definitely want to check them out. Head to their website, livingkitchenfarmanddairy.com, and you can also find them on Facebook. Coming up next, we've got some listener shout-outs. Stick around. So, Bert, we have a lot of listeners that do we a do. lot of traveling. They do. And sometimes they step outside of the Oklahoma border and they go to places like Texas or Or, Arkansas. Or Tennessee. Or Tennessee. Yeah. And when you're out exploring the fun that... Outside of the dome, if you will. (laughs) When when you decide to take that journey and you're exploring places outside of Oklahoma, mm-hmm. I think it's in, it's super important to represent to represent Oklahoma to yeah. let people know, oh Oklahoma, I should check them out. By the way, so when I was being a tourist in Tennessee, a Tennessee tourist, I was representing not only me but the Only an OK Show with my Only an OK Show shirt purchased from Master Threat. Right, and if you need shirts to represent you and your organization Mm -hmm. or your favorite state, the guys over at Master Threads can embroider or screen print your logo on just about any piece of clothing. Do you need a Sooner satchel? Do you need an Oklahoma Sooner satchel? I bet they could do it. Or a man purse, Harley. (laughs) (laughs) If you need a man purse with the Only an OK Show logo on it, you can reach out directly to the team over at Master Threads by giving them a call at 405-673-3787. Or hit them up on the website at masterthreads.us. So, Brett, you have some listener shout-outs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You know, we talk about all the time about 
feedback on us. Talk, send us something. Tell us good. You know, we're 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 in constant need for. We need to be. What what is it? The word I'm looking for. We need to be comforted, and we want to know that we're doing good. But every now and again, something happens, and we go, "Damn, we need to tell them how good they're doing." Right. So I've got a couple of examples of that. You know, we've got a over on the Discover uh, Discover Discover Oklahoma page. We've got, I mean, what over three thousand members. It's almost six thousand. Almost six thousand members now. And, uh, and most of them are contributing to the page, contributing not only to their thing, but to Oklahoma. And one of those is she has been nothing short of consistent with basically if we had a street team that said, check out this thing at this address, it would be Janelle. She is always posting something, some historical marker, some small town. That's exactly what that's i mean do you get any better no and and that that is 100 percent the reason that the facebook group exists yeah it's to help people explore oklahoma and expose yeah and educate oklahomans on things to do fun things to do in oklahoma and then you know aside from that it's also a place to to yes promote your event but there are some really good people out here trying to do the right thing, and one of those is Ryan Huff. Ryan Huff and a buddy. Basically, they've started this thing where if you live in Shawnee, Midwest City, Choctaw, Hera, we want to put you to work. Are you homeless? We'll come pick you up. As long as you be, you're there when you say you're going to be there, we'll come get you. We'll pay it. We'll buy your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you want to come work, I mean, they're hiring every... If you need a job, if you want $199, these are the guys doing it. It it was kind of a thing that's kind of spread. We have it, this thing is spread like wildfire on our page. It's being shared everywhere. But this guy is he's out there doing it, putting people to work. And I think that's a, that's super important. And it's one of the things that we tend to allow on the Facebook group outside of the sharing interesting places to visit and fun things to do in Oklahoma. Uh, you know when a business is, is when a business is offering jobs yeah to to Oklahomans we yeah. we tend to allow that to well I left it. I left a guy off there it's Derek Springer and Ryan Huff they're out there with R and R Lawn Care if you're looking if you know someone looking for a job have them contact either one of them R and R Lawn Care Ryan Huff on Facebook Derek Springer on on Facebook they that's the thing you drive around. People are hiring everywhere, but not everybody is willing to get back into the workforce. And these guys are offering people that would otherwise not probably not make it to the first interview, right? Just based on their on their situation, their circumstance, their circumstance. So, again, we want to thank everyone that's joined the page, all the contributors to the page, uh, and we're going to be doing this more often. I think we need to shine the light on on the people that are out there that are doing the. I'm not saying we don't do hard work, but you know. Out there doing the what is the what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say the Lord's work. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying the Lord's work. They're out there making Oklahoma great again. They're making Oklahoma great again. <laughs> this has been the only an OK show. I'm Harley and I'm Brett, and we're out of here. Peace. Hippa, you can talk to her. My co-host refuses to dim the lighting, so chronic headaches. It's okay, though. It's fine. I don't mind sitting here with my eyes closed. Eyes closed. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you. Okay, um, so I've been fumbling and stumbling through real estate school, and it's all. First of all, I'm I'm not a great I'm not a great student. I'll be the first to tell you. But reading through some of this stuff, and if the the and the thy don't talk to the why. You need to ask, hi. I'm like, what? Is, I don't understand any of it. I don't know how I'm supposed to remember any of it. Uh, school is school is important. Education is important. But I think it's going to kill me. I'm not a good student. I wish I was.
I don't I don't I don't think it I don't think it really even amounts to intelligence. I know that I'm intelligent. I see myself doing stuff just on the fly and I'm like, dude, you're freaking you're pretty smart. But when somebody hands me a book, I'm like and uh you know, they're like dog. I'm like G- gobs? No, dog. I just turn into a a, a freaking mush brain lunatic. I'm allergic to dogs, even if they're on a video. That's why I cry. It's not because I'm sad. It's because I'm allergic to, to dogs, period. The sight of a, a cute dog makes my allergies act up. We're recording, by the way. What do I need to do? I need to open that email up. Oh, oh I've sorry. officially been to the ear, nose, and throat doctor. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> sure as fuck popped something. <laughs> I'm cured. Was it the Holy Ghost? No, it was Harley in the microphone. Harley Ghost. <laughs> what is that over there? What, 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 pill is, what pill that's yellow could possibly If you don't know right away... I'm colorblind, so it's hard for me to tell the difference between some of my yellow pills. This is either Q-certain or it is turmeric. Turmeric's good for uh, inflammation, too, isn't it? Yes. You get the email? <sighs> oh, no, no, no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Man, I'm good. I got plenty. I don't like belts. And if but if if Bro Belt would sponsor this show, I would speak the gospel with Bro Belt. Have you heard of a Bro Belt? Okay, Bro Belt. I, I I invented this thing 20 years ago out of sheer necessity because belts don't work. I have no butt, so it really doesn't. It's hard to tell what my waistline size is because I have no ass. With that being said, bro belt is a revolutionary way to not wear a belt. You take these two, they're, you can get them in different lengths, depending on the, the measurement between each belt loop. And of course, depending on the size of the waistline, those belt loops vary in width. So mine are 8-inch belt loops, so I'm a 36, 38. You take these and you put it through the belt loops and you Velcro them and it cinches it senses the waistline. I'm telling you, I'll never own a belt again because I have to constantly tighten the belt. I'm not going to lie and tell you that they're, it works perfectly because I've literally, there are three things with absolute certainty, okay, that I've been called my entire life. Brett, Manzer, or no, three statements. Hey, Brett. Hey, Manzer. Crack kills. I've heard crack kills my entire life, Okay. I'm not saying crack isn't going to kill, but I'm I'm telling you I'm working on my addiction. I'm trying to cut down on the crack. And I'm telling you Bro Belt has saved my Okay. I promise if you tried Bro Belt, you wouldn't wear a belt again unless you were tucking in a shirt. Do you think you should wear a belt if you're not tucking in a shirt? No. Get Bro Belt. I'm telling you. Get they come in a two pack. Get I them. just get all of my pants with elastic waists. I me too. <laughs> Or drawstrings. I don't do that. Let's go. My, this, my, I will. But in fact, the shorts that I have on have a drawstring that I can't cinch up tight enough. It makes me, it's like this, I'm between being insecure about certain things, but I'm like, hey, I'm really having to cinch these up. It's because I don't, I need to do squats. Bro Belt Super Bowl ad take two. Okay. Three, two, one. From the makers of Bro Belt, it's the only an OK show. <laughs> if you love bro belt then you'll love the only an okay show we'll hold your travel up your travel up your travel up, your travel pants up for you <laughs> do you have a fair do you have a fair do you have a favorite pair of pants no everybody does i don't you don't have a go-to pair of sweats that you can find them in the dark really you're kind of just up for anything shirt wise you got a favorite shirt like what, your favorite Magellan shirt? I don't really like them. You don't? Mm-mm. What happened? I just like t-shirts better. Yeah. What's your favorite t-shirt? You got an Iron Man shirt that's pushing fifteen. It's not Iron Man. It's War Machine. War. Okay. So it's Iron. It's Iron it's a, Man two. It's a decade old. old. Yeah, at least. <laughs> um, I, I realized real quick. I realized something that now with the new, not the new job. It's still kind of. It's I've been doing it for a while. I own five collared shirts, which is five more than I've ever owned. Yeah. 
I've got way too many t-shirts, but I'm afraid to get rid of them. There's certain t-shirts that I, I have to, I like to wear at night. Like before bed, I like a shirt that fits. I know I like shirts that kind of fit already, but at night, I really want a shirt that's kind of, it swaddles me a little bit. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. It's weird. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Yeah. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. We're headed to the Living Kitchen Farm and Dairy in Depew. I'm Brad. And I am Harley. That was a very short introduction because yeah. I think you didn't say anything about after the break. Oh yeah, what were we gonna? What was it after break? Uh, some callouts. Yeah, some callouts. Yeah, some listener callouts. Listener callouts. Three, two, one. 